We have now heard the leading arguments from the two candidates for the high office of United States Senator from Illinois, Judge Stephen A. Douglas and Mr. Abraham Lincoln. According to the usual custom of debate, each of the candidates will now speak in rebuttal. The year was 1858, and two men, one Republican and one Democrat, were trying to be elected U.S. Senator from the state of Illinois. The issue dividing our nation at that time was slavery. The two men agreed to debate each other seven times in seven different cities in Illinois. Let's meet the two candidates. Stephen Douglas was the uh, Democratic candidate, and he took the position that uh, slavery should be allowed uh, to expand into those new territories. And Douglas actually believes that it should be up to the, the people in the states to decide whether they should have slavery or not. He wasn't actually for slavery, um, and a lot of people thought in these arguments that it comes across that he's for slavery. He just really believed that um, it was up to the people to make the decision. Lincoln believed that slavery was morally wrong and violated freedoms. He once said, a house divided against itself cannot stand because he knew this issue was tearing apart the country. He actually never specifically called for the abolition of slavery, but more the fact that it would be confined to the existing southern states um, and then eventually marked for ultimate extinction, that as the country grew, the other states would come in as free states and there eventually would be way more, many more free states than there were slave states and eventually slavery would die out. And we can go on, as we have done, increasing in wealth, in population, in power, until we shall become the... In each debate, one candidate would open with a 60-minute address. The other would then speak for 90 minutes. The first then had 30 minutes of rebuttal for a total of three hours. So these, both of these men were getting up and speaking to a crowd for an hour and a half, and generally it was with minimal notes. And, and these were big pageants they'd have. They would come into town on the trains and they would have people with banners and flags flying and marching bands and, and then people would go out and bring their lunch, basically, and they'd stand or sit and listen to these people, these two Lincoln and Douglas debate. Now I confess myself as belonging to that class in the country who contemplates slavery as a moral, social, and political evil. But nevertheless, desire a policy that looks to it as a wrong, and hopefully to the time when as a wrong, it may come to an end. Let each state mind its own business and leave its neighbors alone. If we'll stand on that principle, then Mr. Lincoln will find that this great republic can exist forever divided into free and slave states. Judge Douglas declares that if any community wants slavery, they have a right to have it. Well, he can say that. He can say that logically if he says that there is no wrong in slavery. But if you do admit there is a wrong in it, Judge Douglas cannot logically say that anybody has a right to do wrong. Neither man truly took a position in terms of favoring either the abolition of slavery or favoring slavery as a concept wasn't as important as the debate that was generated thereby forming opinion throughout the United States in terms of slavery. Now, Americans couldn't see those debates. They weren't able to uh, see them like we could see a debate on television. They weren't able to hear them on the radio. There was none of the technology that exists today at that time. And the only way that people could um, get to hear the debate, so to speak, was to be able to read them in the newspapers. This, of course, being those people who weren't able to travel to Illinois. Uh, to hear the debates firsthand. There was a lot of press coverage of the debates. 
Newspapers supporting Douglas would make edits and corrections to what he said and leave Lincoln's text unedited. Lincoln's supporters would do the same. Many thought Lincoln's challenge was impressive and articulate, but Douglas ended up winning the Illinois Senate seat of 1858. Lincoln didn't lose the debates, but he lost the election. It wasn't actually the citizens of Illinois that elected Douglas in 1858, rather the members of the Illinois legislature, which was dominated by Democrats at that time. Although Lincoln failed to win this Senate seat, this series of debates catapulted him into the national spotlight and made him a serious presidential possibility for the Republican Party in 1860. And he gained uh, quite a bit of uh, notoriety um, and identification based upon the debates. Part of the reason Lincoln was able to win the presidency in 1860 was due to statements made by Douglas in the debates, statements which became known as the Freeport Doctrine. He wanted each state to decide whether or not to have slavery, and this led to the eventual split of the Democratic Party because southern states strongly opposed this position, wanting to keep slavery intact. The debate format used by Lincoln and Douglas is still used today by high school and college debate teams and in social studies classrooms. It features two sides, affirmative and negative, and involves a moral issue. A single person on each side presents its position. Arguments are divided into time segments and go back and forth between the pro and the con sides, with each side presenting its argument, providing evidence to support their argument, and offering rebuttals. It started as a local political race between an incumbent and a virtual unknown, yet its consequences would affect the future of the entire nation, from an increased awareness of the issue of slavery, to Douglas's 1858 win, to Lincoln's emergence as a national figure in 1860 presidential victory, which eventually led to the secession of the southern states, and ultimately the Civil War. Even now, 150 years later, the effects of the Lincoln-Douglas debates are still impacting our nation today.